Today I'm going to show you 14 different ways to distress furniture. Some are sanding hacks and some are traditional sanding methods. Here we go. So you take a piece of sandpaper like this. This is 150 grit sandpaper. I like to use that on furniture. And just take it and fold it into four. Section of four like this. And then you can sand the edges like this. And you can sand the middle like this. Now this is black paint, so what happens when you wax this is most of this will disappear, this gray. So, but this is the purpose of showing you how to use the sandpaper. These are scrapers. There are different sizes of paint scrapers you can get. Some of them are like three inches wide, but this is from Harbor Freight and it is less than ten dollars for these four scrapers but you can go to Lowe's and Home Depot and like that and get a paint scraper it's usually a little bit wider but I like this small size I prefer almost anything to sandpaper so you can kind of do the same thing sandpaper does here on the edges like this so nice tool for getting the edges like this not so much for large areas like you wouldn't want to run this up and down this because it would really just mess it up but great for edges this is a set of metal detailing brushes that i got from harbor freight about six dollars and it has all of these in here so i'm going to use a wire brush that is not too stiff i do a lot of gothic furniture um it's a little bit stiff but not so stiff that it would um poke a hole in your finger so it's got a little bit of flexibility this is the only way that I have found to get down in the cracks of these onlays if I take sandpaper to these onlays I can sand forever and still only get the outside edges of them so to get down in these cracks if you take one of these you can get all the way down into areas that are otherwise hard to reach. I would literally never be able to do this with sandpaper just because I can't get it in these tiny little spaces. So this is a wire brush. You can get them at uh, Lowe's and Home Depot and hardware stores, probably at Dollar Tree. And of course, you can always get them online. So best thing that I have found to distress down in the little cracks and it doesn't seem to damage the wood. If you use too stiff of a brush, it will damage your wood. So test it on something before you put it on your furniture just to make sure your bristles aren't too stiff if you're not familiar with the brush you are using yet. This is a sanding sponge. It is literally a sponge-like thing that is sandpaper. These cost about three or four dollars in hardware stores. So, this works pretty well for that. You can do the large areas with it. Quite easily. It's good at getting in the cracks. And it's much more comfortable to use than just a piece of sandpaper in your hand. I definitely like the flexibility of it and these corners on the sanding sponge are good for getting in the corners and crevices of your project like that. You can also clean these out, rinse them out, and so they actually last a good long time. It's not like you just do one piece of furniture and you're done. They actually last a long time. Worth the money in my opinion. Wet sanding is pretty much like it sounds. You're going to take a wet cloth and you're going to take it to your paint that is already dried and you're going to rub until some comes off like that. Now when you wet sand, you can get down to whatever color is under the top color, but you won't be able to distress to see any wood. So if you just want to see the color that's underneath, you can wet sand. You can also use things not intended for painting purposes, like a kitchen knife. You can take and put 
a wet rag around the kitchen knife. And very carefully go along the edge. You have to be really careful when you do something like this because it is easy to get off track and scrape something you don't want to scrape. This is one of my favorite sanding and distressing tricks. This is a piece of sandpaper that goes on an orbital sander. It just sticks onto it. But if you have any of these, you take them and fold them in half and it gets in the corners wonderfully like that. This right here these are really hard to get in these cracks with sandpaper and a sanding block, of course. You're going to have a hard time getting down in that, in this crevice. And same thing with using the regular sandpaper. But if you take this and you fold it in half, you can get down in there. The reason being is this is basically, it's stiff. So when you fold it, it's kind of a hard edge. So it will go down in those cracks. And this one, you want to go kind of slow because once again, if you get off course, you're going to scrape something you don't want to, but it is distressing. So anything goes, if you like it, then it's fine. But coming back and touching up more paint is easy. So that is a way to breeze through the cracks and crevices like that. This is a sanding block. You just put a piece of sandpaper on, you open the sides up and it's got sharp things that hold the sandpaper on there. And so you use the surface to sand. So it's great for flat surfaces and you can also do the straight edges. It's really good at those. One of the oldest ways to sand furniture without special equipment is a piece of wood. This is a large piece of wood, but you take your sandpaper and you wrap it around a piece of scrap wood. And this makes it operate pretty much like the sanding block we just used. And this takes a lot of the work out of, out of sanding. So I can do a large area fast like that. You can also do edges well with this too. Here's a much smaller piece of wood and that works fine too. This is thousand grit steel wool, not Brillo that you do dishes with. This is steel wool from the hardware store. And if you take this and you dip it in some water, this is another way to wet sand except this gives you a little more power than the washcloth does it or the rag i should say it takes off paint easier than than a soft rag and the steel wool is not so rough that it scratches up your furniture so if you do this with the steel wool just as your paint is almost dry it is so easy to do when you wet sand, you don't have to worry about the water. It will dry pretty quickly and it won't mess up your paint. If you want to, you can take a dry rag and wipe the water off, but it'll sort of take care of itself. This is a palm sander and it basically only sands in one direction. So this is really good for big surfaces like the top of this. This is the closest to hand sanding so far as an electric sander goes, in my opinion. You can do straight edges with it as well. This is an orbital sander. The sandpaper from this is what we used earlier to distress the cracks. This is better for sanding before you paint a piece. You can sand it afterwards, but since this circles as it sands, it can leave circular marks in your furniture, which makes it kind of 
obvious that you sanded it with an electric sander. And that is what I'm talking about. You can try to move it fast and that seems to minimize the circular patterns, but not ideal for chalk paint. Great for sanding a piece before you chalk paint it. You can also do some edges with this. This is a five-in-one painter's tool or painter's putty knife, and this can be used for distressing the edges as well. Just want to do it gently. And besides that, if you want to go back to large areas on your pieces that might have some um, lumps on them, this works for that too. This is a sharp edge which can be used very carefully for getting in crevices like this. You just have to do it slowly and use a lot of control or you can slide off in any direction and you will have to uh, probably take some more paint to your piece. And there's some other edges you can experiment with too on here, like this one. go five in one tool so there you go 14 ways to distress and some sanding hacks for furniture please don't forget to like and subscribe and check back often i put up new videos all the time thank you